Okay, next up from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is kind of funny after the cow company. From Milwaukee, Wisconsin, we have Advanced Ionics. Presenting for Advanced Ionics is Chad Mason, founder and CEO. Come on out, Chad. Your mic's not on. Can we check his mic? Give it another go. All right. There we are. We Perfect. The clock. So we have my colleague Emily here, uh, just standing there. And um, I bet you didn't think you'd be talking about hydrogen today for your happy hour, but you will be. So hydrogen is quite ubiquitous. It's everywhere and just about everything, and you don't think about it. Um, so take your plastic cup, for example, the items in your cell phone, even the food you eat or the beer that you drink. Hydrogen is used in just two industries, primarily ammonia and petrochemicals. It's 90 plus percent of all hydrogen used today. Now, I like the ammonia example. Because I grew up on a family farm in North Dakota. And so hydrogen is used to produce ammonia, which is used to make fertilizer, which goes into the crops that feed the world. And I used to actually drive a tractor like this growing up on that farm, and so I know a lot about this. Now, these heavy industries are highly polluting. Over 30 percent of total emissions today is just from heavy industries like ammonia, cement, and steel. So in order to have a sustainable world, we need to decarbonize these heavy industries. So I wasn't sure if I should show this, but you know, when I was a kid on, a fam on the family farm, I really thought about this problem. And you could see here that I was a very irritable teenager when my mom forced me to take a photo. Um, so thank you, mom. <laughs> um, but so I got really interested in making clean hydrogen from devices called electrolyzers. Um, and so you can see one here in this circle. And one of the key things about electrolyzers that you need to know is they use a lot of electricity. Um, and so, Electricity use really limits electrolysis from scaling up today. Um, basically, the amount of electricity and the price of electricity you use is 73 percent of the total cost of electrolysis. So even if your electrolyzers are free and cost nothing, it still is quite insignificant. And so that's why Advanced Annex was founded, to set the new industrial standard for clean hydrogen, specifically for heavy industry. And so our breakthrough electrolyzers reduce electricity requirements down to 35 kilowatt hours just to make a kilogram of hydrogen. And we do this with our amazing Symbian technology, and it does what other electrolyzers can only dream of doing, eliminating the delicate membrane or brittle ceramics seen with everything else. And so this platform architecture is quite amazing because we have no rare materials and no toxic fluoropolymers. Everything's recyclable. We build our own materials and our own system all under one roof. So let's go to our friends in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And we have Owen and James there who will take care of us. So on the lower left, you can see our test cell, which is a button cell, which is how we proved our breakthrough performance last year. And then amazingly, we've scaled that up 20x this spring and are validating that right now. Furthermore, we've scaled that up another 8x and are going to start validating that early next year. We also have a bipolar plate there, another key component. Now, all of this secret sauce goes together, and if we pan to the left and up, it goes inside of this insulated box up here. And so this is where the magic happens. Steam is converted to hydrogen and oxygen at the highest efficiencies possible. And then down below is the rest of the balance of plant, and that's what feeds the cell and keeps everything running happy. So move back from demo, please. Thanks, Owen. Thanks, James. All right, so this system is designed to have that synergy with heavy industry. And so we're the only technology that's designed to run at intermediate temperatures, the same ones as these industrial processes we're seeking to decarbonize. So it's quite simple, really. Using more heat lowers electricity use. And so we have amazing traction with partners that we're working with right now to take that stepping stone approach to proving the technology and getting into market, starting with chemicals and then next to energy services and further 
my favorite one, ammonia, and then beyond. And we have customers already asking us for systems even in 26 and 27. So we're ready to start building out our sales pipeline even at an early stage. And so for commercialization, I mentioned the demonstrations in 23 and 24, and then early commercial units in 25, and then bigger units are gonna be deployed starting in 26 and 27 for that massive impact that we seek to have. So by the end of 2030, we're gonna have over $2 billion in cumulative sales booked, and more importantly, abating over 10 gigatons per year of emissions by the year 2050, just with our technology alone. And so we're gonna have this amazing future where dirty fossil hydrogen has been replaced with clean hydrogen from advanced ionics electrolyzers. And that dream I had as a kid of clean hydrogen making clean ammonia for farms such as my family's will finally be realized. And so come build this future with us. We have an amazing team with great background in heavy industry and also amazing military background that a few of our individuals have. So come join us, be part of massive industrial decarbonization. So thank you. Bad clicker. Uh, thank you, Chad. And I'm pretty sure everyone out here has those embarrassing photos, building things. <laughs> You're it, not was, alone. it was a little tough for her to find that. So <laughs> I'm glad she did. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Peter, let's start with you. <laughs> for sure. Love the personal experience and the, the connection you have. Um, maybe tell us a little bit about, so you outline a super ambitious goal, you know, $2 uh -huh. billion, you know, by, by 2030. Um, yeah. We'd love to see you accomplish that plan. Yeah. Um, what are the, the technology risks of kind of continuing to scale up that you need to advance through over the next year to approach commercialization? Like, what are the, like, the technology risks that may slow you down? Um, it's not so much technology risk. It's a matter of putting stacks and testing them and getting those hours. Okay. Um, a lot of customers think of the 1,000 hour mark as the baseline for what they want to see to move forward. Okay. And so everybody's telling us, like, okay, get a stack, run it 1,000 hour, hours, and then let's move forward. But what's really fortunate, and you know, often with many startups, there's this chicken and egg problem of getting early partners and proving it out. Yeah. We've been very lucky to have some really amazing early stage partners that are willing to take a risk and, and work with us, uh, even without um, significant hours yet. Got it, uh, great. And Nicole. Uh, thanks for being vulnerable with the photo. Um, to, to piggyback on, on Peter's question, wh what are the exogenous factors that might impact that rollout plan? Um, can you clarify a little bit? Oh, like not, not you um, uh, being able to execute the, the build internally, but mm -hmm. rather like what are the, um, the industry tailwinds or, or potential challenges you might face? Yeah, hydrogen is in a little bit of a bubble right now, and I think we're learning more as a group um, and folks like myself, it's our job to talk about what are the important uses of hydrogen and not the bad uses of hydrogen. And so important uses are decarbonizing these dirty things where hydrogen is already used today, ammonia, chemicals, and steel is up and coming. Um, so that's very important. Um, we have good you know, winds at our back with government policy, the new IRA bill that's been passed helps stimulate production. We need to continue to have more good government policy, especially to stimulate the demand side adoption of clean hydrogen, not just the production side. Um, and furthermore, we need to just keep deploying as fast as possible. It, we really ride on the coattails of the solar and wind industries and other clean energy industries. So if they're unable to deploy fast enough, it affects everybody that wants to you know, electrify everything. Yeah. So. Thank you. Mariana? Well, I'm, for one, delighted to see a novel electrolysis technology, um, it, although I think there's a piece that I didn't quite follow. Can you walk me through the process of heat use and waste heat and how yeah. that may or may not limit your overall deployment capabilities? Yeah, you can never defy the laws of thermodynamics. Yeah. And so the most important way to make clean hydrogen is just use water vapor or steam. And so all of these industrial processes today, ammonia and all these chemical processes are very hot. They're very exothermic. Often that industrial user is just dumping that heat into a cooling pond or wasting it. And so we take that heat, we make steam with it, 
and that lowers your electricity use. And that's the number one thing you can do. You don't need fancy catalysts. You don't need new membranes. You don't need to get too crazy with it. You just need to do what thermodynamics tells you to do. That was a good answer. Allison. So obviously we talked about the energy savings, but what is the cost of this implementing the new system? And are there, other than government incentives, barrier, mm -hmm. like what is stopping people from wanting to do this? And what do you kind of, how do you sell it to them? Yeah. So we had a really good message even before the IRA bill passed is, you know, once you get to say $20 per megawatt hour electricity, which is available in many places in the world today, um, you can basically already get that below $1 per kilogram hydrogen if our technology was already at scale and in the market. Um, for example, with the IRA bill, now you have a $3 per kilogram um, subsidy. So in fact, you could actually be producing hydrogen for like negative $2 even. Um, so, so it's really attractive, but you know, I just want to make sure everyone's very clear. We've, we're stimulating the, the production side you know, from government policy. Um, there does need to be additional policy, and I think Europe is still in the lead with this on stimulating the demand side to ensure that industrial consumers are using clean hydrogen. All right, pay with the last question. Can you actually walk me through your numbers again? Because uh, I was scribbling some numbers while you were talking, and I got to $10 per kilo for what I thought I saw on the slides. Mm -hmm. So help me see how you got to the negative well, not the, the dollar <laughs> per kilo. Yeah, so OPEX really dominates. So I'll use the, the $20 megawatt hour, or you could say two cents per kilowatt hour electricity example, multiply that by 35. So that's 70 cents per kilogram just in OPEX. And then basically your CapEx and your O&M and some of those other things are pretty minor, uh, 15 cents uh, per kilogram when it's kind of scaled up, basically. Okay, so you're assuming two cents per kilowatt hour on renewables? Or? Yeah, and, and okay. when you run the techno-economics, you can pick your favorite numbers, and it varies worldwide massively. So anytime I have a conversation with someone about it, I'm like, okay, pick your geography first. Where do we want to talk about? What are the incentives in that location? Then let's break down um, what are your costs for hydrogen. So it's actually quite fascinating. Uh, so. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Give it up for Advanced Ionics. <laughs>